Welcome to another episode of the Mostly Mike Show. The kind folks at Viver sent me this six foot tall storage cabinet in exchange for me to make a review video showing its assembly and use. So full disclosure, I did not pay for this cabinet, but I'm going to give you my honest opinion on the ease of assembly as well as the build quality of this cabinet. Without further delay, let's put this thing together. Unlike our current presidential cabinet, the Viver Metal Storage Cabinet, even unassembled, appears to be a lot smarter as well as more useful. This package is super heavy. I'm sure that the delivery man loved me for getting this. When moving this, you want to be careful and use two or more people or perhaps a dolly or it could put you into the real estate business. And what I mean by this is you wake up the next morning with two acres. In the package, which is gross, we're looking at 52 kilograms or 114.6 pounds. The cabinet itself, not so gross, is 43.3 kilograms or 95.5 pounds. The Viver metal storage cabinet came packed very well with these sheet metal enclosures on each end, as well as quarter inch MDF on the top and bottom, with two layers of corrugated cardboard on the edges. In the box, there's various pieces which I'll start by sorting out. The parts are all labeled by letter on white stickers. I'll set the shelves and doors aside, assuming that they'll get put on last. There's a screwdriver included, but I would suggest getting a decently ergonomic number two Phillips driver or even a cordless driver gun to make the assembly smoother. We have a hardware pack with what looks to be leveling feet, some miscellaneous doodads, some hickey doo flinkies, along with some thingamabobs, which I'll get into in a second. There's also an instruction manual. I guess maybe that's for if you want to do like a white glove installation. There's two different screws to be concerned with in the assembly process. There's the smaller ones, which according to the manual, there's 43 of them. Although I hadn't counted them, I'll just take their word that there's 43. These are the letter N screws. Then there's just four of the slightly larger ones, which we'll get into in another minute. For the majority of the assembly, you can simplify things by picking out these 47 screws and putting them in a container. I prefer these magnetic pans, so if you kick it or knock it over by accident, they don't scatter everywhere, creating a cussing episode. Oh, for one brief moment. Oh, fudge. So we have four main side panel pieces, A, C, D, and B, which make up the back and sides, in that order. They just hook together and fasten with five of the small letter end screws down each seam. Just make sure that all of the welded clips are on the bottom. The holes seem to line up pretty well and the screws went in pretty smooth. Piece G is arguably the trickiest piece in the entire assembly. For this, I laid the unit down on its back. With the label facing in, the two legs slide right into the front bottom corners as far as they will go in, and the four holes will line up in the back. These four holes are where those four larger screws will go. While you have it in this position, there's two pieces, which mine weren't labeled, but they are the L pieces. They go in as shown and attach with four end screws in each one. You can also take advantage of this position to put the nylon leveling feet in, which they just screw into a depth of your choice. We can now lift the cabinet back to its happy vertical position. Piece J, which is basically the floor of the cabinet, just sort of snaps in with the smooth side up. The square notch goes toward the back of the cabinet, lining it up to accept the seam that you made when you joined the two back panels together earlier. It's a little tricky to get it to snap into the clips on the three sides, but just stick with it and it'll eventually go. There's four pinky holes that you might have used between attempts to get the clip aligned underneath. This is where the four snap-in plugs go. This is also where you tune the levelness of the cabinet after the assembly by accessing the top of these adjustment screws with a slotted screwdriver. P 
piece H is basically the roof of the storage cabinet. It just sets on top and then fastens with 10 of the end screws from underneath. There's two L-shaped brackets that are not very clear in the instructions. They attach with four screws in each on the back side of the front top on both sides as shown. And here would be with the, with the screws installed. Now on the opposite side, of course I didn't put it in yet, but you can see the four screw holes that go uh, with that bracket. There are 16 shelf clips which install by clicking the skinny part in the slots, skinny side up. This part is strictly viewer's choice where you put them. Bend over and I'll show you. I made it easy by relating them to all the round holes so I don't have to count slots. No one likes to count slots. If you do like to count slots, tell me all about it in the comments. I can't wait to hear about your freaky slot counting adventures. Anyhow, piece K would be the shelves, which there's four of them. Those can be even angled in at this time, as I will demonstrate. Now you'll find four washers and two pins, which are hinge pins. These get a washer on each side and go in the holes at the bottom front of the cabinet, near the corners. The doors just align with these pins and set in. The door with the lock goes on the right. You will feel it go in the, um, hole, so go gentle. The top pins are spring-loaded, just press down and move it around until it snaps into the hole. Repeat with the other door. You'll find four rectangular magnets in the parts bag, as well as four of these rectangular pieces of plastic with pins sticking out of them. On the top and bottom of each door, there's two holes about an inch apart. Stick a magnet between these holes, and then snap a plastic piece in by aligning the pins to the holes and gently pressing in until they snap. This completes the assembly process. There's some drywall plugs and a couple screws to attach your Viver metal storage cabinet to the wall with the provided attachment keyholes in the interest of keeping it from tipping over and crushing a helpless victim in extreme unfortunate hypothetical situations. But the choice is ultimately yours whether or not to prepare for those situations. So I will quickly put some random items into this cabinet and after that I will give you my final thoughts on the Viver metal storage cabinet. Please try not to judge me by the choices that I made for the items that I chose to put in the cabinet for demonstration purposes. This cabinet definitely holds a lot of stuff. It seems decently durable for use around the office, garage, wood shop, bike shop, or other applications. The rated capacity is a thousand pounds. Will it hold that? I don't know. I'm sure, however, that the shelves seem more than adequate for stuff that I put in, as well as other items such as cases of bottled water, motor oil, cleans and cleanses, stuff like that, linens, printer paper, paper towels, toilet paper, etc. Not sure that I'd set an engine block in it, though. The doors have very consistent gaps. They lock without any fuss. and nothing rubs. The finish quality seems to be top-notch in matte black. Beaver did an excellent job packing this unit by using the metal end caps, MDF armoring, and double corrugation where needed. One place where I think that there could be more improvements is in the instructions. While not impossible to figure out, some areas would have been clearer had there been a few words describing what's actually going on. But then, that's why YouTubers make videos about these things. I'll be sure to include my Amazon store link here and in the description below, which by clicking this link before making any purchase, even unrelated purchases, I earn small commissions which help improve future content at zero cost to you. I would like to thank Viva for sending me this cabinet and making this video happen. Please click that thumbs up, share, and consider subscribing if you're new here. Be sure to check out some of my binge-worthy playlists just loaded with hilarious annex and madcap hijinks. Thanks for watching this Most Little Mike Show presentation, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>